Mario Kart 8! It's one of the latest games on the Wii U to be released, and my god, is it great! What's up, guys? It's Daz here. Be really cares. I'm dropping another Daz review on you guys. Hopefully, this one will be more short and sweet, so let's begin. Now, the way this game will be judged is through nine separate categories, adjusted from feedback from my previous review. The categories are as follows. Visuals out of 11, music out of 11, online multiplayer out of 12, balance out of 11, polish out of 11, replayability out of 11, controls out of 11, level design out of 11, characters out of 11. And at the end of that, I will have a little bonus section. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a 10th category to round them all into 10 points each, so this scoring system will have to suffice. So, visuals. I mean, that one's a no-brainer. 11 out of 11, no questions asked. Music. Again, just literally, the only problem I could possibly conceive is that Grumble Volcano has very little remastering to it. Just a little echo and other minute things that I didn't really detect. It's such a small thing, so I don't really think it's worth deducting a point. So, 11 out of 11, once again. My personal favourites are N64's Rainbow Road, Sweet Sweet Canyon and Dolphin Shoals Above Water. Though pretty much the entire soundtrack is great. Online Multiplayer. Now this one was given a maximum of 12 points, simply because I needed the total to add up to 100. And I feel that the online features are the most important parts of Mario Kart 8. So, how'd it do? Well, I found it to be surprisingly reliable and functioned pretty adequately in-game. The other players were actually in the same place on everyone else's screen, and items wouldn't miss from lag or anything. The only exception I can think of is that item boxes aren't always hit by other players, and the boomerang possibly doesn't return to the players on my screen, but it might just be coincidentally their last throw every time I witness it. Other than that, the online capabilities seem pretty flawless. That being said, however, I did find that losing connection was a common occurrence, and for that, I will be deducting 1 point from 12 point total, bringing online multiplayer down to 11. Still though, I haven't had this much fun in Mario Kart since Double Dash, and the others I played with felt exactly the same. It's a shame you can't chat in-game while you're actually racing though. Balance. I would say this is Mario Kart 8's weakest category, as some items are well balanced such as the blue shell, which while can now be destroyed by the player in first, it compromises by becoming a threat to other players in front of the user, as it slides in the centre of the track like a regular shell. But it is now impossible to hold a second item while holding an item behind you, which helps to balance the game out more as the player in first has a harder time defending themselves, but this has not been too well received. In fact, the first place has become one of the most boring and frustrating ranks in the game at this point, not just because the items are less helpful, as has usually been the case, but the most common item you get now is the coin, which is not a good idea at all. They barely have a function in the game anyway except unlocking vehicle parts. The only scenarios where first is fun is when you either have a super horn to hold the entire time, or if you have three green shells to fire behind you, and that requires the other players to be close on your tail anyway. On top of that, you have the crazy eight, which disappoints me. For one, it's not random items that surround you. Instead, it's always a green shell, a red shell, a banana, a coin, a blooper, a mushroom, a star and a bomb. This item is also not a lower rank exclusive. Oftentimes you'll find the player in third get this item, which is incredibly unfair for the player in fourth, for example. The balancing in this game are by far the worst in any Mario Kart game so far. But it is still only a few items, and it's more than likely that Nintendo can and will patch the game to even out the playing field. Because of that, balance gets an 8 out of 11. Now on to one of the strongest categories of the game, Polish. Nintendo is notorious for polishing of games to add that little extra charm and boy does it show in this game. A few examples of these little extras include beeping at the start of a match to startle the other characters, music changing when you are underwater, instruments adding when you are in first place, characters looking at each other and items as they come closer, the movements of the characters while rewinding an MKTV, and touching the back of the Mii's head will make them flinch. Do it enough and they'll get frustrated. And there are many others, I just can't really think of them right now. Polish gets an easy 11 out of 11. Now Mario Kart's formula of racing really makes replayability an instant success, as no match is ever the same. The use of items means it's literally anyone's game unless you're miles ahead with a super horn, which isn't very fun. Therefore, without even thinking, Mario Kart scores 11 out of 11 on this topic. Playing online only boosts this idea even more anyway. Controls. Now I personally favour the Wii Remote and Nunchuck setup, and with this I find the controls to be perfectly comfortable. Albeit slightly perplexing that B drifts and Z uses an item, which I'd expect to be the other way round, but it's still perfectly fine. 
This is also the same with the other control schemes, with the only one showing difficulty being the gamepad's motion controls if you have a faulty gamepad, which is not even the game's fault. So, once again, Mario Kart 8 scores an 11 out of 11 for controls. I especially like how with the gamepad you can switch between viewing what's on the TV or the map, and while it's not advisable to do so while racing, you can do it before or during the traffic lights at the start. It also remembers your viewing preference until you exit the game completely, which is very nice indeed. For actual gameplay, I, and many others, now find it actually possible to play as heavy characters such as Bowser, which means something must be going right. Level Design with the possibilities of underwater segments, gliding segments, and the new anti-gravity segments, you can pretty much guarantee for some mind-blowing level designs. I mean, look at Rainbow Road! But on the other hand, I found some maps to not utilise these functions to their full potential, such as Melody Motorway, or Music Park for you Americans, excluding the inclusion of an anti-gravity section. And even just on a basic level, there were some disappointments. I mean, look at Rainbow Road. I personally did not find the bench challenging at all, nor did I like the general look of it. The track was too space station and not enough rainbow. I personally was sceptical when I first saw the tile design of the N64 Rainbow Road, but I've come around to it since then. But I really dislike how it was simply redone here in an inferior way. Not to mention, I think the track was a little too wide for Rainbow Road. It really lost all of its difficulty. Still, at least one Rainbow Road was satisfactory. I also really like the new linear design of having a single long track with three checkpoints, rather than three laps. It allows for more innovative tracks in the future. DLC anyone? On top of that, I also adore the look of the map when shown on the gamepad. The use of colour gradients really helps show a sense of depth and angle which is quite vital for the track designs in Mario Kart 8. Level design gets a 9 out of 11. On to characters, and at first I once again was sceptical about the introduction of the Koopalings, but they really do show a strong diversity between them, and I can finally tell the difference between Iggy, Larry and Lemmy! While I've softened up to the Koopa Kids, I cannot STAND Gold Mario and Pink Gold Peach. Pink gold? Seriously? I know I'm colourblind, but jeez. Other than those two, I really like these characters, and all of their taunts help to bring out their character and diversity. I especially like Waluigi's tricks with his lean structure and Morton's freaking voice. Anyway, characters get a 10 out of 11. And that is all 9 categories, however I have one bonus thing to add to these reviews, which can't be counted as a 10th category, as the top score for this section is 0. Nitpicks. I'm a real nitpicker, and so my rule is for every 3 nitpicks I have with the game, one point will be deducted from the total score. So, what did I find? Well, I feel like more could have been done with the gamepad in this game. For example, I often have the gamepad to my side as I play, so it would have been really cool to have a side view mirror as a viewing option. The fact that the horn was a default choice is not very appealing, especially since it can be used by pressing the item button when you don't have an item anyway. It would have been even nicer if you could customise what to have available on your gamepad before the match, so you have 3 or 4 options for a single match. That's one nitpick. Next, there are no presets for saving vehicles. The roulette system means you have to scroll through to find your favourite vehicle manually every time. It would be nice if you could save like three for future uses. I would also complain that there is no random option, but there is. Shame there isn't one for characters. That's two. MKTV. I love ya, but damn, I wish there was more to ya. At the very least, allow us to turn the camera around the player as it plays. I've had times where I've had to try every combination of editing styles to get the correct camera angle, and I'm often disappointed by the end of my efforts. Like the time I destroyed a blue shell while it was on the ground with a red shell, I think. The time I threw a bomb down Mount Wario to hit the player in first from miles behind. Or the time I shot someone down with a green shell. Though MKT was more interested in me getting hit by a red shell. This is literally the best clip I could get of it, and the other two clips, I just they cut it out completely. Also, the editing options are bland and linear. Maybe an advanced option could be available? And while editing this video and seeing videos posted to YouTube and Miiverse, the quality of MKTV clips are also kind of lacking. Do you see it being a little pixelated? I certainly have. Hmm. And finally, switching characters online. It's not an option. 
If you want to change card or characters, you have to leave the server and come back. Say goodbye to your stranger buddies. And that comes to a total of 4 nitpicks. And since every 3 means minus 1 point, nitpicks will drop the total score by 1 point. Not too devastating, but I think it's necessary. So, put these all together and we have 11 from visuals, 11 from music, 11 from online multiplayer, 8 from balance, 11 from polish, 11 from replayability, 11 from control, 9 from level design, and 10 from characters. Deduct the nick picks and you get a grand total of 92. And that rounds to an accurate 9 out of 10. Would I recommend this game? Hell yeah! Even if you don't have friends IRL, the online functions are good enough. As stated before, I haven't had this much fun since Mario Kart Double Dash. I adore this game! And that is the end. Hopefully this was informative, and if you're interested in more, here are some links. For now, my name's been Daz, you don't really care and I'll see you in a bit.